What's going on everybody? I'm Isaiah. Welcome to another Thrust video. Today we are going to be in the maintenance center hangar with Dimitri learning how to do a compression check. Alright, so the ignition switch is here to make sure they're in the off position both for the left and right mag. Make sure your fuel uh, cutout set to the cut position. As a precaution, also, if you want to dive in here deeper, there is a fuel selector valve. Put it in the off position. So that's why you make sure there's no fuel supply or ignition being on. So since we secured it inside, just gonna make sure we got all the spark plug leads disconnected. Undo yeah. these. That way we're making sure, even in case it sparks, it's not gonna start the engine, pour that up. Bottom. All right, so now when all the spark plugs are, the spark plug leads are disconnected, we can easily turn the prop without being, starting the engine. All right, now, since we're gonna do the check on the cylinder number one, we're gonna pull the bottom plug out of it. Make sure we inspected the spark plug. It's in a good condition. What are we looking for? Uh, basically it's the cracks on the insulator if it's missing any pieces of it or it's got cracks or cheap outs and also since it's the bottom spark plug they're getting uh, a lot of fall in them so make sure the condition is clean and serviceable put it aside in the tray tray is marked we got the row of the bottom plugs pertaining to every single cylinder which we got four of those in here. Since we're removing that from the cylinder number one, putting that in the one bottom place on the tray. So we can keep track of what spark plug came out of what cylinder and what position on the cylinder. Because cylinder, we got two spark plugs here, top and bottom. And now we have that opening on the cylinder. This is where the spark plug usually sits, like on this cylinder, it's still installed. So the next step is install that extension. Nothing special about this piece, it just gives you more room to work around here rather than in between the pipes. Make sure it sits tight and sealed. And then the next step is to bring the cylinder number one to the top dead center of the piston. In terms to do that, I'm gonna cover the, the hole of the extension and we can hear the pressure building and hissing sound, pushing our finger. And then at the same time, we're listening for the magnetos uh, to open the couplings and you're gonna hear a click, which means you're pretty much close to where you need to be. And in terms to verify that, the starter ring has markings on it right there. And you see that one says TC1. That's what marked for the top dead center of cylinder one. You're gonna align this mark with the, uh, this little dot on the starter, just like this. Make sure they cross each other. So now we're set to perform the actual compression test. Make sure you got a shop air available, no less than, uh, I'd say 90 PSI, because the test requires you to check it against 80 PSI of the shop air. Obviously gonna have your uh, compression tester set. Make sure it's calibrated up to date. Got a tag in here. The next step is just to make sure your set is actually working. We're gonna build the pressure on the receiving side and make sure that the sending side reads the same. That's important. So we got 80 over 80, which is a good number. So next thing, gonna connect it to our extension here. So I'm usually building that up to 20 PSI. Make sure they're still reading the same. You don't wanna be around the prop when you're doing that test because if it spawn, it's gonna hit you. And a good practice, yeah, you see they're reading pretty much the same, 20 over 20. This is the safe pressure where I feel comfortable about 
messing with the prop because you see if I'll move it, it changes the pressure. So I want to keep it to where they equal. And whereas there is no uh, pressure against the prop, it means that it's not pressurizing the cylinder. All right, you gotta yell out loud, hot prop, so everybody around you knows, and you gotta pay attention to what's going on around you, especially from the back if somebody's running into the prop. And then you can, you can start increasing the pressure, going up to 80 PSI on the receiving end right here. And then your cylinder is gonna read uh, in this particular case, 79 over 80, which is pretty good. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to go below 60 PSI against 80 by the book. So in case of our cylinder will fail the compression test, let's say we're going to read uh, whatever below 60 PSI over 80 from the shop side. Uh, that means our cylinder is actually failing the compression test. And in this case, we can have a few instances causing that one of them gonna be the piston rings it's the rings where our pistons moving inside of the cylinder and uh, in case those fail cracked or chipped out or worn out uh, it's gonna have a leak around, around the cylinder oil scrap rings and stuff in terms to verify that you'll hear the hissing sound coming out from the filler throat here so that means most likely your rings are shut in this case the other instance where we can see the failing on the numbers here but there are no hissing sound coming out of uh, oil filler neck uh, we can listen to the uh, exhaust pipe see if we hear any hissing sound coming out of the exhaust pipe which is gonna lead us to the stuck exhaust valve which is here on that side the one that pushes all the gases out that's pretty much it all right thank you to everybody for tuning in hopefully you guys learned something if you did Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, boost your algorithm so you can get more videos like this on your feed.